Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Susie. It's great to be here. Hope you're all well. I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I'm uh, 34. I'm at that age now where all my friends are rooting. There's kids popping up everywhere. I, uh, and my mate asked me to come and watch his seven-year-old boy play Sunday morning soccer. Right? It's exciting, isn't it? Uh, after he asked me, he leant in and went, just so you know, physically he's not very good. Right? <laughs> and I leant in to him and went, well, he's mentally fucked now too because he's just there. He heard everything. Right? And, uh, rattled him. Right? Uh, I went down and watched Sunday morning soccer and I, dis I witnessed a disgraceful performance, ladies and gentlemen. I, uh, not from the kids, that was to be expected. Uh, <laughs> disgraceful performance was of two fathers on the opposition team. I thought dickhead fathers at sporting events for kids had been rubbed out. Not at all. It's still alive and strong. <laughs> There's two fathers in the opposition team, probably like mid-40s, just into it. Yelling abuse at their boys, Sebastian and Christopher, seven years old, right? And the referee, who was about 15, just yelling abuse. Like, referee, you're a fucking disgrace. Sebastian, kick the ball. Right? I couldn't believe it, right? Because, you know, I, I felt sorry for the boys, for starters. Like, I played a lot of sport growing up and my dad never verbally abused me from the sideline. He uh, was much more clever with, like, hand signals. Uh, uh, rocks. Uh, and the loser cupboard once we got home. Um, I learned to win, though. I did learn to win. I, um, I was watching these guys, I thought, I'm going to say something. I've got no connection to Sunday morning soccer. I'm never coming back to watch this again. I'm going to go around and say something here, right? And straight away they were like, referee, you're a joke. And I was like, right, hey, fellas, how about you just calm down? The ref's doing his best and so are your boys. And you should know better, right? I felt like 10 feet tall. I thought, I fucking nailed that, right? And uh, <laughs> people were sort of giving me thumbs up. I was like, got them, right? And then they both quickly turned around. I thought, oh, fuck, I didn't, didn't think they'd turn around. Uh, <laughs> and then one, one of them's like, who are you? And I was like, oh, fuck. Fuck, I didn't think they'd ask me a question either. I thought, <laughs> well, I thought I'd say, shut up, everybody chair me off, killer pythons all around, right? But no, <laughs> who are you? And I, I, I'm not great off the cuff, I must admit. About five seconds passed, so I just sort of took a deep breath. I was pretty happy in the end with what I come up with. I just went, uh, I'm the president of the club, and you should know better, like that, right? I thought, fuck, I've nailed that. I felt 15 feet tall. <laughs> People would like give me thumbs up saying, you tell them, Pres, right? And I, uh... <laughs> then one of the dickheads points to the other dickhead and goes, but he, he's the president. Of the club. As I say, I'm not great off the cuff, and uh, about 10 seconds passed, felt like five minutes, but I was still, again, pretty happy with what I come up with in the end. I just sort of took another deep breath and went, Well, you better check your emails, mate, because you're gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's how I became the president of the Eastern Junior Football League. So, uh, <laughs> If anybody's got a kids here under 10, come see me after the show. I've got some registration forms out the back. Right? <laughs> what else has been going on? I had a birthday about a month ago. I want to tell you about that. It turned 34. I want to tell you about a gift I got. One of the shittest gifts I've ever been given. I got given a kite surfing lesson off an auntie of mine. Yeah, kite surfing. So she thought, well, he doesn't like kites. And he fucking hates surfing. <laughs> Maybe if I mesh those two together, though, <laughs> we'll get on more. <laughs> No, Aunty Kate, right? I don't know who come up with kite surfing anyway. Let's make something really boring with something that's very hard to do. Fucking great kite surfing, right? I'd rather have a go at politics rock climbing. Is that a thing? Give me a go at that, right? <laughs> Kite surfing. I, I did the lesson. I'll have you know it was as fucked as I thought it was going to be. It was terrible, right? A stupid idea. It's terrifying. You've got to stand on a board, right, which is hard. That's hard to do. Then you've got to hold a grip, which, fair enough, that's not that hard, right? And then the grips are attached to these ropes, and then the ropes are attached to a big kite. And it's not like a bird-shaped kite or a dragon when you're a kid at the park with your dad. It's a big fucking kite, right? They're slowing down drag race cars with these in their spare time, right? So, <laughs> huge ones, right? So I'm out at sea attached to these ropes with the rest of the class just bobbing up and down like a terrified tea bag, right? Just like this. <laughs> this is the worst gift I've ever been given. Why the fuck did I come to this, right? Fucking terrible, right? And then Wayne, the instructor, swims over to me, right? One of these real cocky instructors just expects you to pick up everything straight away, right? I'm terrified, bobbing up and down. He comes over to me and goes, Oh, hey, Daniel, what trick are you going to do once you get the hang of it, mate? What trick are you going to do? I said, Oh, I don't know, Wayne, he's holding in a shitter trick, mate, because that's a. Uh, that's all I got, champ. I'm fucking terrified out here. How about you fuck off, Wayne, right? Unbelievable. Then he gets everyone's attention, goes, guys, you say no, we do see sharks in this area. Uh, so if you see a shark today, just pop your hand up nice and straight and we'll come and get you. <laughs> I said, if I see a shark one, I'm going to fly right out of here, mate. I'm... <laughs> Pick up kite surfing real fast, you idiot. <laughs> 
leave you this, guys. I want to tell you about the best answer I've ever seen anyone give. I witnessed this recently in Melbourne. I was walking past a pub at about one o'clock in the morning, right? I witnessed the best answer I've ever seen anyone give, right? Walking past this pub, and there's this one guy just sort of half sitting, half standing up against the wall of this pub. He clearly had a massive night, right? He's got all the stains down the front of his shirt. Pretty quickly, four police officers surrounded the guy, right? All in their high-vis gear. One of the officers tried to chat to the guy, but he's just too off his face, right? And then this guy slid down the wall onto his bum, so he's now sitting on the ground, right? And the officer that tried to chat to him put some blue rubber gloves on. Blue rubber gloves, right? And I thought, oh, I'll stick around for this, right? Where's this? Where's this going, right? The officer <laughs> leant over the guy, right? Put one blue glove on either cheek, right? And then he asked him a question. He's like, uh, Craig, come on, Craig. What have you taken tonight? What have you taken, right? And Craig gave the best answer I've ever heard. He just goes, ah, oh, I just... I've just been taking it easy. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, guys. Have a great night. See you next time.